All right, so let's uh, start our, uh, uh, if we don't finish this thing uh, and uh, we're, we, we are out of time, um, and we, if we cannot finish it, please uh, view uh, the rest of the recording from uh, the other section, because the other section we went all the way through it. If we, uh, if we cannot finish, there's not much left. You already know all the stuff we talked about. So uh, probably it's going to be done on time. If it is not on time, please uh, 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 watch the recording from other section. Uh, section ZAA, that is done, and uh, it is the exact same thing as yours. So uh, the last time, uh, it, it, like anybody wants to get like a, a five minutes break or something before we continue? So anybody who needs uh, wants to take a break? All right, okay, so let's have like a, a five minutes break and then we're gonna come back, okay? Recording, yeah. So virtuals are only active only active when uh, a parent is uh, a, a child is pointed by a parent a child is referred to by a parent and if I tag the method as virtual then what happens is that even though the uh, let me just come to main over here even though now that we have this thing even though uh, the child is pointed uh, the child is pointed by a parent it will check to see if an upgraded version is there if that's the case it will call it so uh, the example that we have over here we have all these things so first of all I have an animal with it. it's a rat I created which means for that virtuality doesn't mean anything so so oh so let me just rerun it for a second yeah, so as you see over here, I have a rat and then I have uh, uh, three cats created. One is just an automatic cat. The other one is a cat that is pointed by a cat. And finally, there is a cat that is uh, pointed by an animal and the reference of an animal to a, to a cat. If I actually ask the animal to act, because there is no cat in here at all, virtuality does not mean anything. This virtual doesn't mean anything. Because there is no cat, obviously it's gonna, everything's going to act like an animal. When I'm using the animal reference to point to a cat, that's when virtuals are active. So now, although this is an animal reference, because the... Uh, act over here in the animal is set to a virtual automatically it's going to point to the latest version that is the cat if for any reason i do not want this to happen i can back go backwards in the inheritance say i want the action of the animal to be called even if it's virtual so you can access the animal's method even if it's virtual but you have to explicitly tell to compiler that i want the animals to be called and therefore the animals gotta get called but you have to do it manually move doesn't matter it's animals because move is not virtual it's not going to be upgraded but sound will and as you see act over here completely overrides the act of the animal which means you don't see anything but when you are actually calling making the sound virtual in the sound itself you want to reuse the parent sound and do something you can and as we said you can explicitly call it if you want to so the sound is virtual but it's reusing the parents function act is virtual is completely overriding the act of an animal and it completely ignores it uh, and it's the exact same thing with the animal pointer with absolutely no difference. So you can actually 
call the act and automatically the latest version is called move will not have no effect sound will actually call the sound because inside of it it's using the that the, the animal sound it's going to be called and you can explicitly call the animal too <coughs> when you are deleting a cat using a cat pointer virtuality doesn't mean anything because it's the cat that is being deleted the animal will be deleted automatically with absolutely no problem therefore both are gone the beauty of virtuality comes when you are deleting the animal pointer holding a cat because you mentioned that i want the virtual the the destructor to be virtual automatically the latest version of the destructor will be called which is the cat's destructor therefore deleting the animal pointer will result in destruction of the cat and because cat is destroyed everything will be gone with it which is the animal too and at the end obviously the automatic uh, uh, objects are called because of this fact as we mentioned before from now on till the end of the your career in C++ programming at any moment you create a destructor always make it virtual just in case it is inherited to another class to make sure there is no uh, memory leak so from now on the signature of a destructor is virtual till the name of class never create a destructor just as is are we okay with this so when we were teaching in the other class i posed the question that was very uh came out pretty cool so this is what i'm going to do the question is to actually teach what is a pure virtual function uh, the question that i asked was this the question was <clears throat> if you are to create uh, create a human class okay what method of the human what method of the human what method so if you are to create a human class a class that encapsulates a human what method of the human exists in reality but not explainable what does mean is that think about all the thing a human can do and as asks yourself can I explain what this thing is in a human and implement it can I really implement this uh, um, yes Jack you were saying what is the question yeah, so um, I was thinking speech. Like all wait, 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 wait. I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you. <laughs> it's going to come. Oh, sorry. I didn't hear everybody's you. Gonna, everybody's going to do that. Okay, so we're going to go through it. So I'm going to say if you are to create a human class, what method of human exists in reality but not implementable? Let's put it that way. Implementable. And I want you to all answer this question. And I want to see how many of you actually got this thing right. <laughs> so, the, 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 I said implementable. And, and so far, only one person got it right. The rest, completely nonsense. And I'm going to go through it and explain exactly what it is. When we are going through it, um, yeah, and we will see. Uh, I now we understand now. So, and and two people are saying things that has absolutely no. Uh, keep going. I see people are not answering. So, our point is to think of an action. Let's say walking. When you think of walking, 
you close your eyes and you think a human can walk. Can you explain to an alien coming from Mars what does it mean to walk? Okay? How does it work? You can actually make, you write a program, you create a robot of a human, and you make that robot of a human to do the walking. Can you implement that? And think about it the same way. So, and I'm going to show you the answers now, and many of you didn't, chose not to answer. Now, take a look at the chat, please. Emotions. It is perfectly explainable. When you're sad, a human being can be sad. When it's sad, it's depressed. It doesn't matter what type of a human being I am. If it's a female human being, sad is sad. If it's a, a male human being, sad is sad. If it's, uh, uh, I don't know, uh, Turkish human being, sad is sad. If it's an Asian human being, sad is sad. If it's uh, a North American human being, sad is sad. Sad is explainable implementable and emotions are all the same for everyone that's a wrong answer breathing do you think uh, like uh, a North African uh, human being and a South American human being they breathe differently breathing is the same thing lungs expand air goes in lungs shrink air comes out perfectly implementable for all humans Next thing, intelligence. Perfectly ex explainable for all humans. All humans are intelligent in the same way, and we can explicitly, explicitly explain what intelligence is for every single human being. Thoughts. Kind of okay, depending on what does it mean, thought. I'm going to, so thought, I'm going to wait. Language, you're right. Language is not something you can actually implement. Every human being has a language. We know that. And that language is referred to what, where the human being comes from. So you cannot implement language. Language is something that you have to know what the human being comes from. So you have to extend the inheritance to, uh, I don't know, a Persian human being who's from s southern thingy. Then they're going to say that Persian is going to probably speak Arabic. And another Persian is from north and east of, because I'm from Iran, I know that, north and western part of Iran, then the language is going to be Azerbaijanian. It's going to be central, it's going to be Persian. So different types of languages come from. So for language, it has to be very specific. Brain, seriously, we share it even with dogs, for heaven's sake. They're all the same. Uh, the way we think, exactly the same. We all think the same way, by the way. Speech is perfect. Speech is something you can't implement. Imagination you can. Life you can. Unsure. I don't know what is that. Now, do are we clear when I say unimplementable method of a human being? Do we do we understand what does it mean when I say it's not implementable? Uh, are we okay with this? Are we okay with this concept? Understanding of what is not implementable? Yiman, you said no. Daniello, you said no. Talk to me. Yeah, I said no because I just didn't get it. Can okay. you? Okay, uh, so, so let's, let's put it this way. So let's put it this way. Okay, let's say I want to create a robot human being, correct? You have to stay with me, with your microphone on, okay? So, I want to create a robot of a human, yeah, a human being, a robot, a humanoid robot, okay? Okay. And I want to, when I, when, and I want that robot to be able to talk to me, correct? Mm -hmm. If I want to create an action talk, what should be the language of that talking? Can you tell me? Same language, same language as you speak. It's got to be what? Same language as you do speak. The, the language of that, sorry. The same language you speak. So you don't know what? You simply, the, the answer is, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Depending kind of. where, if you're making that robot in Russia, 
probably it speaks Russians, right? Mm -hmm. If you speak it in, in India, it's going to be one of 17,000 languages that they talk. And a, 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 an Indian student actually told me yesterday, like the number of languages they have over the 17,000. So it becomes literally impossible, correct? Okay, correct. so that's what I'm saying. So, but if I ask you, can a human being talk? Immediately you're going to say yes. But if I tell you, how does it talk? Then you're going to say, you have to be more specific, correct? Okay. So yeah. whenever you have to ask yourself, the definition should be more specific, that's the time that you are thinking about a pure virtual function, a function that exists, but you don't know how to implement it yet. You need more information. Okay. Does that make sense now? No, it's pretty clear. Yep. Okay. So that's what we want. And hopefully, is this, uh, is this okay with everyone? Are we okay with this? So let's demonstrate that thing in our, in, our, in our animal thingy that we had over here. So if I actually go to my animal thingy, let's say, let's say, darn it. So if I go to my animal thingy, let's say, when I'm thinking about an animal, I do not know how the animal sounds. You have to be more specific. An animal can make a sound. There is no doubt about it. But if it's a cat, it's going to say meow. If it's a dog, it's going to say woof. So it's different. I, can, I know an animal can make a sound, but what type of sound, I do not know. Do we understand this? That is implemented in C++ by assigning the methods prototype to a zero. By assigning the methods prototype to, your, to a zero, you are telling to your C++ compiler, hey, there must be a function called sound, but I still don't know what it is. So when you actually go to the implementation of your animal, you don't implement sound. There is no function called sound. But you say there must be. Because of that fact, the animal is not a class anymore. It's only an idea. You, you are designing the class, but you are not finished with your design. Therefore, this animal thingy becomes an abstract class, a class that is not real. You cannot still instantiate it because it has incomplete business in it. Do we understand this? These type of classes are classes that instruct us how this type of classes should be in future designs. These are abstract these classes and they cannot be instantiated. If I try to instantiate an animal and I compile my code and try to run it, it, it immediately is going to tell me, hey, what the heck is going on? Object of abstract type animal is not allowed. You, are, you cannot create an abstract animal because animal has a virtual method in it. So a pure virtual method in it. So an interview question. If they ask you what is an abstract based class, your answer is that an abstract based class is a class that at, at least has one pure virtual method in it. Do we understand this? Although these abstract based classes are, uh, these uh, pure virtual functions don't, they don't have any type of implementation, but they still work like a virtual function, which means if you tell to an animal to make a sound and there is a newer version of sound there, it's going to actually call it which means I'm going to come over here and create a cat and I'm going to say a cat is an animal that can make a sound. So the cat that I have in here actually implements the sound and it's not equal to zero or it's not non-existent. It's there. So it implements it. And a dog implements a sound too. But when you go to the implementation of dog, a sound is woof woof. But when you go to a cat, a sound is meow.
and now if you go to main you can simply create an array now let me just uh, make that one you can create an array of animal pointers and have new cat and dogs in them when this array is called because it's an animal pointer when you are actually calling the animal pointer sound the first pointer that you have is an animal it's holding a cat so if you say animal make a sound it's gonna say mew meow if you ask the second animal to make a sound it's an it's a dog it's gonna say wolf then you call the third animal it's a cat it's gonna say meow and the fourth animal is the address of an automatic dog it's gonna say wolf therefore every and each animal over here will do a proper sound although animal doesn't have a sound of itself but it ensures that a concrete animal we call a class that has all the methods non-pure virtual we call them a concrete class a concrete class of animal must implement a sound to exist and and that's uh what it is that's what uh uh pure virtuality enforces obviously when they are all deleted the, everything is deleted properly because I actually implemented the destructor properly and all the uh, uh, animals are deleted properly the way they are supposed to and obviously the automatic variable uh, 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 object of dog will get deleted properly too so do we understand what is the difference between an abstract base class uh, and uh, a concrete class <laughs> Danny, are we okay? Uh, yes, I'm just, you know, observing. And okay, stuff. That's, fine, that's fine. I just wanted to see if, uh, if uh, we're good. So, yeah. so, so, this is all good and nice, but sometimes when you are actually creating a class, the class that you have is only an idea and nothing but an idea. So, what does that mean? It means you have an animal, but the animal doesn't have any non-pure virtual method. All the pure virtual, all the methods of the class animal are all virtual. Not a single method of the animal is actually, uh, 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 what should we call it, uh, a, co a, a concrete method. It's, they're all pure virtual. Uh, and obviously for such a thing I'm going to create the constructor you can either leave the constructor empty like that or you can do it like this so there are two ways to create an empty destructor just because we want to have it virtual you or you can set it to default you cannot set a, a destructor to zero because that's impossible every class must have a destructor it is impossible not to because of that you can set it to default default essentially means an empty one i want you to create a a, a default destructor for me which means an a destructor that doesn't do anything in its body so these two are the same thing so this is uh same as above so this guarantees there is no memory leak if an animal is inherited and this guarantees that every animal that comes to being must have an act and a move and a sound if they don't have it those animals can't exist and now if i look at it now i have a pet and pet is an animal that can move and make a sound but i still don't know how a pet can act so this pet of mine is implementing the animal but it's not implementing it completely therefore pet is still an abstract base class it still has a pure virtual method that is act and is not actually implemented but when i implement it further into a cat now the cat becomes a concrete class because everything's implemented and it works the exact same way so if i look at the main over here i can create a class of type uh 
uh, cat and I can have an animal created to it and it works exactly the same way perfectly with absolutely no difference so uh, um, it still works the same way I can have a pet too and um, let me just show you another thing that I have over here that I create and uh, so by the way these this type of thing this type of class that is all pure virtual we call this class an interface so animal this interface by the way in C++ doesn't mean anything C++ doesn't care if you have a fully abstract base class or a class uh, a, a, cl a class that has only one pure virtual method to C++ there are abstract it doesn't make any difference but in object oriented methodology animal is an interface interface since all the methods are pure virtual so it's it's like we call we, we call a c string in in c language uh, a character array that is null terminated there is no c string we don't have such a thing they're all character arrays but if you have a character array that you have a null at the end you call it a c string it's the same thing over here there is no interface in c++ um, c is interface is just an abstract base class but in object oriented methodology we call uh, uh, an abstract base class that has all pure virtual methods uh, uh, an interface. Are we okay with this? All right. Now, moving along with this, uh, if uh, to show you uh, uh, a, a kind of nice usage of interfaces, I'm going to show you uh, uh, a main that has an array. It, it has an array of interface array of in, uh, interface created so now if you take a look at what I have over here this is what I created I created uh, uh, um, a kind of an animal kingdom over here for myself so uh, this is how it works so I have an animal and out of animal I have a pet so pet is essentially an animal and out of pet I have a cat I have a goldfish I have a bird and the bird actually is inherited into a body. So now when you look at the inheritance that I have over here, animal is an interface, pet is an abstract base class, cat and goldfish are all uh, uh, concrete classes. I don't know if a bird is a concrete class or not. I'll take a look at it. Let me see what does it have. It has act, move, and sound. So it has act, move, and sound. So therefore it cannot be uh, it cannot be uh, an, inter uh, 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 an abstract base class, it is a concrete class. And then I'll make a body out of that one. So if I take a look at this and I take a look at the main that I created for this, the main as you see over here looks like this. I create an array of three animals in one I put a cat in the other one I put a bhaji and in the last one I put a goldfish and as soon as I go through every single one of them and I say act each one is gonna act each animal is gonna act like it's supposed to and let me just actually put this one out so just so we can see the execution line by line okay so now if I run the program we will see that the interface animal over here is pointing to three new objects so if I through my loop as I go through it the first animal is going to act and it's gonna be act the cat move like a cat and say meow and the next animal over here is gonna act like a body and uh, move like a uh, crazy body and uh, it's gonna tweet and uh, finally uh, when I uh, do the goldfish the goldfish is gonna uh, be Cleo the goldfish and uh, it's going to swim and it's going to say glop for the song. So as you see, the three animals act perfectly as they are supposed to. And when they are deleted, because the destructor of the animal over there 
is virtual, everything will be deleted perfectly as they are supposed to. And that is that. Any questions? Are we okay with this? Sorry, are we okay with this? So one of the very good side effects of creating interfaces and abstract base classes is that although an abstract base class, for example, doesn't have any of these actions implemented yet, but I can implement helper functions for interfaces and then creating that helper function for interfaces uh, simply uh, eliminates the need of creating those helper functions for the children. It saves lots of time. Take a look at this. I have an animal. An animal acts, moves, makes sound and everything and, and as you see it's the animal that we have. But I'm going to overload the helper insertion operator overload for the animal, even though none of those things exist. So this animal of mine that has a CPP file, unlike the other animals that we add, let me just uh, uh, close all tabs so I can actually open this one. It has a CPP file. And when you look at the CPP file of the animal, you will see that OStream insertion operator is actually overloaded and we are saying animal act, move, and make a sound. But animal doesn't have any of those. I do not care. It doesn't matter. Because the reference of animal is passed, I can use this for a pet, for a dog, for a cat, for a goldfish, for a bird, because they are all animals. And since the actions of all those animals are, in fact, virtual, the proper version will be called automatically without the need of overloading this for the entire animal kingdom. And if I go back in here and take a look at my main, my main is simply show the animal. And as it goes through it, automatically it's going to call the proper action for it. So when it actually runs and creates the the cat and a body and a goldfish, when it comes in here, as soon as the insertion operator is called for it, it passes the first one, the cat, to the animal, and definitely the cat is going to be acting now, although it's the overload for an animal. And the second one is the bird that is going to get called, and therefore it's going to act like a bird, and the last one is going to act like the goldfish, and everything is done. So the overload that I have over here does not need to be re-implemented because all the actions in the overload are virtual and the exact same thing again happens for the destructor and we know exactly what they mean. Are we okay with this? Oh, somebody told me you forgot to resume recording. Um, I know, I am. I did it now. I just saw that one. Jack, you have a question. And please, if you have something like that, you send me a private message. I'm going to see it five years later. Just activate your microphone and let me know. Jack, go ahead. Okay, uh, I just wanted to confirm the definition of a concrete class. Is it a class with no virtual methods? No, no, no. pure virtual methods. No pure virtual methods. Okay. So every so for example, in here, if I take a look at my say cat, this act, move, and sound, although I'm not saying they are virtual, the virtuality we said is transitive. So if I mention or not, act is virtual. So but whatever it, children not have will also have the act function. Yes, exactly. It, it, no, okay. Not that it, it, they will have act function. If they have an act function, the act function upgraded. is upgradable. Gotcha. It means if I have a cat and after a cat, I have a Persian cat. Actually, we do have Persian cat. So if I have a Persian cat out of a cat now, or I yeah. have a, 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 what do you call it? A Siamese cat? I don't know. What if, I don't know breeds of cats. But let's say I have a Persian cat out of this one. I can still point to a Persian cat using a cat pointer and the act and move and sound will be virtual. Got it? Okay, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. But if I had... But if I did not have the move in here, now my cat is an abstract base class because it has a pure virtual method called move. Okay. Got it? Got it. Thank you. Perfect. 
all right so that's that and that was the thing for today uh, so you don't need to watch the other classes thing that was what we wanted to go through um so all the virtuality and everything is is uh is talked about and, and went through it uh you have all these things to play with and see how they work so i have all all the things left over there for you please open them and play with them and see how they actually work and act are we okay down to this point any questions about your midterm mark or anything you got please talk me uh, book an appointment with me uh um on uh wednesday afternoon and we'll talk about your marks or whatever uh concerns you have about the semester uh wednesday afternoon i'm all yours uh if there is nothing else we can leave are we okay can we go any questions so let's do it like this. Any questions? All right. Thank you, everyone. Have yourself a beautiful, beautiful day. Thanks, Farad. No problem.